My Lords, virtual proceedings of the House of Lords will now begin. I remind members that these proceedings are subject to parliamentary privilege and what we say is available to the public, both in Hansard and to those listening. I remind participating members that their microphones will be set to mute and that they should unmute their microphones shortly before we reach their place in the speakers list. Members are asked not to use the group chat function. My Lords, the virtual proceedings on the private notice question will now commence. I will call the private notice question in the normal way. I will then call on the Minister to make the initial response. I will then call the Lord to ask the original question to ask the supplementary question in the usual way. The Minister will again respond and I will then call in turn those Lords asking supplementary questions as listed on the speakers list. Please ensure questions and answers are short and I apologise in advance if it is not possible for everyone to be called. <clears throat> I ask each speaker to ensure that their microphone is unmuted prior to asking a supplementary question. Each speaker's microphone will be returned to mute once a supplementary question has finished. In accordance with guidance agreed by the Procedure Committee, if members are not listed, it is not possible to ask a supplementary question nor take part in proceedings. Private notice question on COVID-19 domestic abuse, Baroness Burt of Solihull. I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. Minister, Lord, Baroness Williams of Trafford. My Lords, the Home Office has provided an additional £2 million funding to bolster specialist domestic abuse helplines and websites. This will ensure that all victims can access vital support safely and securely and is in addition to the 750 million announced by the Treasury <laughs> for charities. Alongside this, the Home Office has published specific guidance on gov.uk and launched a new awareness campaign to signpost support services for victims. An expert of Solihull, supplementary question. The shocking increase in domestic violence, doubling of deaths and the 50% increase in calls to helplines show that there's more than one kind of epidemic happening in this country today. And over 60% of women were turned away from refuges before the corona epidemic. But some good can come of this, my lords. This week, the Home Affairs Committee recommended a cross-government approach to tackling this scourge on our nation. We could, for example, loosen the rules and speed up the availability of housing benefit to help refugees move families on into social and other housing accommodation, thus unblocking the refuge places. Will the noble lady, the minister, use her considerable powers of persuasion uh, to knock departmental heads together and make tackling domestic abuse a central pillar of our COVID-19 response? And will she virtually meet with myself, uh, Women's Aid and other charities to ensure that we leave this crisis in a better position to protect victims than before we knew coronavirus existed? Minister, well... One of the things that I might say to the noble lady, and I actually think she will agree, is that on domestic violence, I think we've always had a cross-government approach to this. Certainly some of the roundtables that we had before even coronavirus and in the lead, lead up to the DA bill, um, I think were very consensual, very collaborative, and um, it's certainly uh, something that I will continue to promote and we have been meeting and engaging, well, engaging virtually with charities right from the start of the outbreak of this pandemic. Well, Kennedy of Sulik, supplementary question. We're also very concerned about children trapped in these dangerous domestic situations. Can the uh, noble lady outline what measures the government are taking to protect children? Who are, in the, who are in these dangerous domestic situations and then more widely can she also say what the government are doing to protect children at risk of sexual and other abuse? I really recognise the noble lord's point about children because 
children are at the brunt of either the, the abusers or the witnesses to abuse. Um, and as I was saying to the noble lady, Lady Burt, one of the things that um, we're, I am on the call every day with uh, the Home Secretary on is our operational partners who are very alive to what might be going on behind closed doors. And on um, CSA, um, I, I can say to the noble lord that in the last four weeks, the NCA has developed and disseminated 1,060 child sexual abuse packages for police forces to investigate. Those figures are horrific, but I think it's testament to the good work of our police forces. Baroness Anderson of Welton, supplementary question. in calls to the domestic abuse helpline, but we haven't seen a corresponding rise in calls to the police. Can I ask what the government is doing to understand this discrepancy so that we can make sure that victims also feel able to contact the police should they need to? Um, well, the noble lady is absolutely right. The, there, is a, there is a mismatch between inquiries into the helpline and actually what police are reporting. But actually, even amongst police forces, there's quite a disparity. So the Met are seeing far higher incidences than say other um, uh, police forces are and again on those upper operational calls police are really vigilant on spotting uh, some of the signs of domestic abuse it's, it's a priority activity for the home office at this time but as we see that cheek supplementary question there's clearly a, a lack of capacity in refugees for women who are fleeing um, so will the government take a serious look at what the French government announced last month? Mark, they would they would fund 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 putting in victims of domestic violence, and will they further help that pop up part of counselling? Maybe a supermarket across the country for more easy access to advice and support. Will the minister take take note of that in his proposal? I find it very, very difficult, Meryl, to hear your question. Um, but I think, if I'm not wrong, it was split into two parts. First was about lack of capacity in refugees. And I'm not saying this is um, this is a positive uh, outcome, but actually refugees are uh, reporting vacancies. I, that's both a good and a bad thing, I think. Um, in terms of um, you, you said something about how in France people were being um, able to to report in, say, through supermarkets. Um, well, I, two things: hotel rooms becoming available. The French government are paying for hotel rooms and pop-up counselling centres in supermarkets. Um, again, I didn't hear you very well, but I heard you better than the that's first time. Right. That's um, right. to, to, uh, to, uh, and the minister's people have promised to write out on that question. So I'll just make everybody and then we'll move on on that. Baroness Finlay of Lundgaard. My Lords, I declare that I'm chairing an inquiry into alcohol harms. When will the data on alcohol fueled domestic violence during lockdown be made available and collated with sales, given that over half of intimate partner and almost all family homicides in 2014-15 involved alcohol? And the latest research shows that alcohol fueled violence is disproportionately clustered in the lowest socioeconomic groups who are the people living in particularly difficult situations. One of the things to come out of um, the COVID-19, uh, one of the positive things to come out of uh, the, 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 the current pandemic, if there's anything positive to report at all, is the decline in drink related uh, crimes sort of after hours. Um, but the noble lady is absolutely right that the behind closed doors uh, harms of alcohol are yet to be uh, released in terms of data. I think it's something that we will know retrospectively. And of course, the House will be very interested in this and all other aspects of uh, domestic violence um, as, as time goes on. And of course, we will um, uh, report back to the House uh, on, on the outcomes of that. 
But as I say, one of the positive things is the lack of violence on our streets. But the, the, the downside of that is what's happening inside the home. The Lord Bishop of Gloucester. Uh, my Lords, continuing the theme of children, given that lockdown has removed children's usual contacts with schools, community groups, services, what's the government doing to increase public awareness and also providing advice and support for children at this time? The government's doing several things, but in, in terms of adults, the You Are Not Alone campaign, I don't know if you, you saw that, that the Home Secretary uh, released uh, is is certainly uh, up and running so that adults can access that and there's been a number of uh, online support for children to uh, to, to be able to, uh, to, to to actually have a line in to both help and support but also going back to Lord Kennedy's point children who are victims of child sexual abuse online support for that aspect of what lockdown is meaning as well. Supplementary. We'll move on to Lord Bencathra, supplementary question. Uh, my Lords, I, I thank my noble friend the Minister for all the excellent work she's been doing to tackle this long-standing and difficult problem, which is greatly exacerbated, of course, because of the current quarantine situation. But can I ask just how prepared were the government and police in identifying and dealing with domestic, and vi domestic abuse and violence during this pandemic? And what measures did they put in place in preparation for it? It was at the forefront front of our minds that as we entered lockdown, there were going to be some people who weren't going to be affected by necessarily COVID-19, but affected by violence within the home. And um, it's 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 very gratifying to hear noble lords so concerned about it. One of the first things that I did was actually to get in touch with the um, domestic abuse commissioner, uh, Nicole Jacobs, and in fact everything that she requested from the sector has been put in place now, including the. Uh, uh, you are not alone uh, campaign. Uh, sorry, the, um, uh, the 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 hashtag. Um, I've suddenly forgotten the, the the. Is it it's the new you are not alone campaign? I think um, and um, and also all the other funding packages that uh, they requested and the IT support because actually that's incredibly important. If you can't get out of the house, you need to get that support somehow. Baroness Henry, supplementary question. The current pressure cooker situation doesn't have a retirement age, quite the opposite. Older people can be particularly vulnerable, not to just to alcohol fueled abuse, particularly to financial abuse. The specialist charity which supports older people is also taking referrals from larger organisations and from carers and care homes. Will the government ensure both awareness and financial support extend to what is a less well-known problem? I mean, I think what the government is getting, in, particularly in the Home Office, we're getting more and more evidence of financial abuse, particular, particularly uh, amongst older people. And of course, economic abuse is now being, um, being seen as a form of domestic uh, abuse. So absolutely, no lady is absolutely right. And not only elderly, uh, elder abuse in terms of uh, economic abuse, because older people, as I heard last week in, in, the, in the question, are, are being subject more to scams. Um, that was raised with me last week. And actually, I just, um, just confirmed it is the You Are Not uh, Alone campaign that I was answering to uh, the noble Lord, my noble friend, Lord Blancatra. Uh, I have added, uh, a few minutes as a result of the connectivity and audio issues, but I will go back to Baroness Armstrong of Hilltop if she's still here. Baroness Armstrong? Well, my, my lords, the time allowed for this question has elapsed. My lords, the virtual proceedings will now adjourn until 1pm for a statement.